Hey, I wanted to ask you, you know, when you, uh, I mean, you're, you're often, you know, serious and talking football with us, but you also are not afraid to, you know, show uh, your personality and, and humor. Um, I don't know if you had felt like this was any sort of decision you made, but, you know, when you started to talk to us, you know, this season for the first time, was it like, hey, I'm just going to be myself? Because it seems like you could have opted for a little more conservative approach. Um, all I heard when you just said that was that you think that I'm funny. <laughs> Hilarious. That's all I heard. Um, no, I think uh, there we have a lot of support. You know, there's a lot of people I've worked with that have experience um, in doing press conferences. And then, you know, our PR department is top of the line. So the, the key thing they um, it really was uh, the key advice that I really received was just be yourself. So um, that's all I try to do. Um, but uh, whether whether people find that funny or not, um, I, I, there's probably people both ways. But um, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that there is a piece of my personality that comes out. Mike, it's been reported you're supposed to interview with the Dolphins today, I believe. Have you have you already done that? And, and if so, or, or even if not, what has this week been like for you in terms of trying to prepare for a game, but also kind of having that in the background? Um, there, there is, uh, something scheduled, uh, hasn't happened yet. Um, but like I said before, you know, that they're, they're, they're as a football coach, you, you feel, um, th there's a level of anxiety if, if there's anything distracting you from your job at hand, because you know that it's hard enough to win, um, as it is and, and to your, your teammates are, um, are counting on you and, and, and so it, it, it's been pretty easy to, to, uh, to answer your question um, because of my uh, loyalty to my job, my teammates, and um, really, really hasn't been in the forefront of my, my mind because you, I mean, you work your whole career uh, to be in a position like this in the divisional uh, round of the playoffs, um, one game away from the NFC championship game. You, these, these are few and far between. So, um, with as many days and hours that we work as coaches, um, it's not hard to, to focus, um, in big moments like these. Mike, you obviously could have done whatever you wanted in life, but you followed your passion, which is football in general. Uh, since you've been in the, in the NFL, it seems like you've developed a passion for the X's and O's of the run game in particular. What about that puzzle thrills you? Well, it, you know, really it all started in Washington, um, and moving on, you know, we, we had a tendency as a coaching staff to get fired every place we're at. So, um, and I, I just really answered the bell to what Kyle needed most um, in terms of assistance and you, you want value. So um, I was fortunate to be around some excellent football coaches and um, Chris Furster and Kyle Shanahan. And there was, there was an avenue um, for me to, uh, to help the, the team that I was on. So that was really the driving force. Um, but, but really it's, you know, I was a receiver coach um, before this and, you know, football in general, that, that puzzle you speak of, that's a, that's a good, good use of words uh, that it, it is intriguing. Um, but it was really more circumstance that um, drove me into the Avenue that I'm currently in. guess that that question was a tough follow-up after you're a tough guy to follow because nobody nobody wants to ask the question now <laughs> um <laughs> it was it was a tough follow but I'll, I'll do my best uh piggybacking on uh, eric's question actually from earlier do you use sense of humor in your coaching is that part of your coaching style and has it helped you just relate to players over the years well i think uh early early in my career um uh, w when I first started working with Kyle in Houston, one of the things that stood out to, to me when he was um, giving me advice when we first started working together was that it is extremely important to be authentic. Um, the, the bottom line is players uh, want to succeed as much, if not more than coaches. All, they're, they're, they're living their dream. And if you can show them 
that you're a tool in realizing their dream. Um, that's all they want. So you're, you're authentic, honest, and you work hard to um, make players better, uh, AKA coaching. Um, th that's all that's required of the position um, in, in our, uh, in our chosen field. And that's really what I focus on is that um, uh, players and, and people that I work with that they, they know what they see is what they get. Hey, uh, Mike, um, what is it about Debo? That Who? What's up, man? Mike Jones, let's go. What's up? How you doing, man? Good. Good, good. You know, there's a lot of great athletes in the NFL. A lot of them can do a lot of different things. But what is it about Debo that makes him unique um, that you guys can use him like you do? And when was it that you guys realized, hey, let's try using him in this unconventional way for a run for a wide receiver um, rather than just leaving him as that? Well, he, Debo has been unique to all of our careers because he is a uh, you're always trying to find what a football player is. And it's it's still hard to define. Um, but the, the game moves slow for him and he's fearless and he's fast and he's big and he's hard to tackle. Um, the, the evolution of how we use him that's a product of two things, uh, him being a really good football player. And, and I think um, Kyle does an outstanding job of really pushing his, um, his staff to uh, open their mind and see what's there um, maybe that we haven't done or really think through the whys of everything that we do. So that combination of a skill set with a with a particular player and the the drive that's um, you know Kyle's been pushing on me since um, the day I started working with him. Um, that that type of those type of things um, end up getting or uh, rendering the results that you guys are seeing. Um, from a whole staff perspective, we're, we're all uh, committed to utilizing our players the best way we can. And um, every person on the offensive staff uh, contributes um, in that direction. It takes a village um, to do things uh, that that maybe haven't haven't been necessarily done with um, specific players. This is also another Debo question kind of related to that. Just thinking about the, the touchdown run where, you know, is it's slow developing and it looks like nothing there. And then all of a sudden he's just cut cut back and he's basically in the end zone. How much of, of that is coaching in terms of being patient? How much is it just Debo being able to identify those cutback lanes? And then do you almost look to create plays where he has more time to sort of survey the field because of his vision? No. So on that particular play as coaches, we said score. No, it, the, it, it is – it is really cool to watch him play. You, 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 it changes kind of your d job description a little bit to where you're trying to give a guy opportunities and not necessarily thinking exactly about defining stuff, more abstract about, hey, how do we get the ball with space? So that, that is a unique um, thing that, that we've kind of grown into. Um, but he, you know, Debo would make any coach look great. There's, I mean... I've been doing this for a long time and I've never, ever, ever been around a football player that called his own shot. You know, I get in basketball, but when you're playing a, um, you know, 22 people are on the field, 11 of them are trying to um, tackle you is with every ounce of um, being that they have. And you just say, Hey, uh, yeah, give me the ball. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to put the ball in the box and for him to do it that was a special moment that only a special player could accomplish. When you're looking back at that first Green Bay game, I asked D'Amico Ryans, how much as a self-assessment have you evolved from that point? So the same thing for you. I mean, Debo had two carries for zero yards in that game. How much has the growth been from week three to now? Yeah. See, we, we don't seem that smart now, do we? The, the, um, uh, collectively that that's the way we look at it though. That's the way that um, it's been ingrained um, w within the entire organization to be extremely accountable. And, and you look um, you look back at that and you're like, wow, how did, how did that happen? But uh, it, how could we go the course of a game and just not get them the ball? There's so many ways to do it, but um, it's a natural progression. Um, the, the, 
you know, invention is there's a phrase I can't remember right now. Um, but like the really out of necessity, we we found different ways to get them. The, there it is. Uh, we found different ways to get him the ball. Um, and and to his credit, he's um, really I mean, he's owning a lot of positions right now it, for every time that you guys sit there and say, um, wow, th- they move him around a lot. Well, no, Debo is moving around a lot. That means he has to be accountable for every single assignment, every single thing you guys see him do. You don't, uh, there's no success that comes out of it if he's not aligned properly, if the timing of whatever play it is isn't on point. Um, that's something that uh, you don't know that someone's up for the challenge until um, you progressively get there. And it's, it's something that I know our whole team um, is really proud of the way he's matured and um, came. He's come into his own um, in 2021 two. Hello, Mike. Um, What's going on? How are you? I'm good. How, how, how is uh, Jimmy Garoppolo doing? What do you anticipate him being able to do in practice? And then the other question would be about your running game and whether you think they're doing well enough right now where they could do another 285 yard output? Well, um, I think uh, Green Bay's defense might have something to say about that. That are they're, they're uh, they you can tell they pride themselves on um, being a tough uh, a tough unit that does not want to get the ball ran on them. So I don't I th- I I wouldn't go anywhere close to predicting um, those once in a lifetime type deals, but um i the j- just the the game in in general it's it's too hard to predict um if you could refresh me on the first part i got distracted yeah what do you anticipate jimmy garoppolo being oh able jimmy to throw, throw, um, throwing wise today yeah yeah the uh well with the way jimmy um takes care of himself and he's you know at this point in the season it, it, you would have to it'd be like pulling teeth to get him uh not to do everything he can to perform at his highest level. So, you know, it's a bump and a bruise that um, for him is a big deal, but for the San Francisco 49ers or fan base and us, you know, that we can all count on Jimmy doing whatever it takes so that he can perform uh, at the level he needs to on Saturday, you know, so um, not too concerned. We, we um, the practice is yet to happen, but if I was a crystal ball reader, which I've, declare that I'm not, um, I, I would, I would anticipate him throwing it well today and, um, and us moving forward from there. Last one. Hey, Mike, I know necessity is the mother of invention. There it is. Um, but ah. <laughs> I, I made you feel better. I, I had to Google it. It was okay. not quite. Yeah. yeah. So just wanted to throw it, throw that at you. Uh, the, the first run by uh, Debo in the game against Dallas, um, you, everyone blocked to the right and like, uh, Kittle had a kick out block and, mm-hmm. and Diggs was left unblocked, but it looked really, I mean, it just had a good <laughs> aesthetically pleasing because it was just this entire wall to the right. Um, and everyone had their guy. Uh, and I just wondering, I don't know if you ever say that was done to perfection, you know, or, or it's never, you know, quite to that level, but you know, I don't know. Was that close? Yeah, no, the, um, to, to be honest, uh, we were, we were hoping for, and, and we were ready for it to be more, um, you got to credit the Dallas Cowboys defense. Um, I think it was a nine yard gain that you're talking about and, uh, the safety and the, uh, the defensive, uh, offensive left corner, defensive right corner, um, compressed it a little bit. Um, but that was something that, you know, as a, as a coaching staff that, that we had, pinpointed it uh, we thought that we might have a chance on that play um and you know the 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 real credit goes to lake and tomlinson and um trent williams who d- did a masterful backside block uh I, I think uh george kittle um really executed you know there's 11 guys executing um uh to their to the highest degree uh the technique that we work on all year um, that's what it takes to, to be able to do something. Um, you know, when an NFL defense co- goes into a game and says, you're not going to run it on us. It, well, everyone better execute, be, be on the same page. 
Um, uh, Chris Furster's drill work better be on point. Um, all of the things have to align. And then Debo has to feel it, run it correctly. Um, don't forget he has to catch the ball when it's tossed to him. Um, and, and so you're excited about that, but um, I, you know, we're every, as coaches, it's something that Mike Shanahan really instilled in us um, early, but we're coaching for every play to be a touchdown. Um, that's why we're disappointed a lot, but that uh, we were excited that um, it got some yardage, but you know, the, those plays are cool, but unless you're converting on third downs and your defense is playing well, um, they, they go in the history's history books is nothing. 